that indestructible organism that Christian book evoked is none other than ourselves in our imagined potency and real impotence or perhaps the other way around. Nicole Brazard's most recent book in English is a very important selection introduced by Jennifer Moxley from the University of California Press, selected poems in the Poems for the Millennium series. And that and other books are available uh, here at the Kelly Writers House uh, tonight. In Nicole Brazard's talk yesterday, she said that she retained, she still had the same anger as when she was younger, but she had more information. The information that she has provided for me has been crucial and fundamental. Both the form that informs that information and finding the forms for that information. I'm reluctant to celebrate too much because so often celebration uh, is a imposed ritual in these states. But the joisance that Nicole Broussard has brought to our poetries is so overwhelming that tonight I want to thank her and to celebrate her lifetime of work. Join me in welcoming Nicole Brazar. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. I will make a little sound. <laughs> I admit it, to write makes no sense unless it helps us to concentrate on living well. All writing is sentimental subject. Those before us, fertile with images, accepted their inclinations. Others, free to think, declared their dissent. But each time, a soft breeze on their skin surprised them. It taught them of a pleasure that would haunt them long after thought has declared itself fertile. I admit it, our eyes aim at hope. I am interested in consciousness because in the midst of reality, beauty always produces a feeling of solitude. Each time thought travels the length of the spine, slowly moving toward our facial features, I am interested in the fictions which fan out, transforming solitude into custom peopled with caresses and alibi. Every day, the shadow slows above our heads, repeats its idea, while the body in the center persists. I am interested in consciousness, because when life is an idea that brings us closer to silence, our pain is invalid. From Vertigo of the Proscenium. The habit of bad readings, because of the immensity, the taste for surprises, and for the moment, like a hot drink, the immensity, how far would we go? 
circumstance of the eyes, the pleasure would repeat. Sometimes we'd say, farewell, it seems a silence, an act of pure will to come back to the beginning, caressing eyes, our lives in miniature. Bustle of metaphors, a touch of fiction. If it is a book, it is a space to last. Relay of meaning at the end of our ashes, a fevering touch of presence. Deep down in the throat and the imaginary, a verbal velocity that commits to tie up in so many pages and light years, the conversation as if an overview of the child cursing through our veins. Let's not touch silence. It is our reserve of hope, the renewed function of the future, a flash of wit gone joyous to wait under our eyelids, perfect distortion of the real. Fact of language torments. Catch me in my tradition, in the duration of the sentence, pleasure sweetly spaced out, catch me in my difference. Ce sont toujours les mêmes mots, grands objets de parole, lumière, nuit ou silence, les mêmes oiseaux l'après-midi, le bruit de l'automne, un autre paragraphe en deçà des mots, quand je respire, la réponse qui fuit. Aujourd'hui, je sais que la structure la plus bleue de la mer se rapproche de nos cellules et de la souffrance intouchable, comme la vie fait trois fois le tour de notre enfance, sans jamais y toucher vraiment, parce qu'on est proche de la réalité et que la matière ne peut pas tomber sans nous avertir, nous laisser là la peau hésitante entre les philosophies et l'aube, à moitié, à jamais, dans le tourment, dans la vaste complication de la beauté. Today, I know that the deepest blue structure of the sea comes close to our cells in untouchable suffering. As life circles around our childhood three times without ever really touching it, because we are close to reality, and matter cannot fall without warning us, leaving us there, skin hesitating between philosophies and the dawn, halfway, forever, in torment, in the vast complication of beauty. Theater, speed of water. The universe is on the page, one page over. As dawn erases night, water has washed the sky. And we said, the ink fled, carrying with it usks and antennae, the whole system of reproduction, the nudity of reasoning beings. Ce soir, si tu rapproches ton visage et que la civilisation s'étire au bout de tes bras, ce soir, si en plein vol, tu rattrapes mon image, dis que c'était au loin comme un dé dans la nuit. Tonight, if you lean your face close and civilization stretches out at the end of your arms, Tonight, if in full flight you catch my image, say it was 
from afar like a die in the night. Palm trees, the present is not a book. Because of the body, the meaning of life constantly changes, vertigo. For if the ocean were at the far end of destiny, spark of green, delicate work of presence intended for a nomad humanity, the future and the future would run together. Yet, the present comes swiftly with each phrase, a new configuration of meaning where no one hesitates. In thought, in rapture, the present is not a book. Joy that traverses the roses' bushes. The soul of people, I have long searched for it in the blind spots of pleasure, and a few promises, sunflowers pun, toward a better definition of pain. The soul of people, occasionally, I drew it, trace of great shadow play, expectancy of life. An hotel, Hotel Clarendon. Quebec City. Ce serait un extrait de roman avec du jazz et des martini. Dans le miroir, il y aurait des objets, des visages. Tu embrasserais l'épaule d'une femme, son regard nu et le fleuve. Tu parlerais du fleuve, de l'été, sur la rue Saint-Jean, en marchant. Tu décrirais « je t'aime » et le continent, tu ferais semblant de vivre là. Suggestions heavy-hearted. One, the idea of balancing on the tip of an eye suspended by the feverish joys of July or salivating before the dark of a present filled with wise that stream through thoughts. Two, then give me the pleasure of tracing words impossible to tear holes in Go back through the course of time between dialogues. Don't waver. Repeat. Memory. Hold fast. The tongue. It calls on us, on everything, curls up everywhere to feed on silence. An idea of absolute, carried off in a word, in a blast of wind. Ask your question. Hold on in silence. At dawn, the verb to be courses in the veins. A heavenly body, it flies as after love or grain of salt. On the tongue, every morning, taste of immensity. It draws near the first dampness. Come kiss me. Think of the great power of water that makes a place of us. Three short passage from Fences in, in Breeding. What is it in my head that makes me think I am someone else who cannot truly resemble me, or maybe the opposite? It is frightening, this carpet of words, the scroll of images, and nothing to explain if we are here, if we are pretending to be here, if we are with someone inside ourselves whom we love or who splits our head in two so that our thoughts scatter deep into the cosmos and that at last we may cry fully emptied out of breeding.
There were two sentences with an idea of time and night. Sentences permeable to death and oblivion. One could readily have believed in a story between them. Each sentence poured its meaning into a great vivarium of torments and questions with words ever easier to caress. Yet each one sought to understand the laws of her own gravity. Whenever the two sentences crossed paths too quickly or too often without apparent explanation, Inner reality dealt the universe a sharp, glorious kick. There remained a wound in the middle of the universe. One needed to behold it, then to have no fear of burrowing into it until the universe became the universe again. This is how the sentences moved forward into the night, carrying with them a quaking of the heart, a taste of the eternity that recommences at the edge of the void, as fascinating as dawn in any mother tongue, in any foreign tongue. And a uh, little petit passage encore. White air in a nine 40 styles, suntan skin, eye, cheekbones, few wrinkles, a slight trembling of the left hand. The publisher recalls the 50 or so persons who, every Monday, used to come to the chateau to listen to poets. After the reading, we served wine in the garden. We also served each other in order to exist. Night would fall. The poets continued to drink and enjoy themselves, no matter their temperament, their inner desert, or their tiredness. They all laughed heartedly while punning constantly and quoting other writers. Tatiana believes that poets speak another language but resemble us in that place where beingness falters a moment before it is chased back into the jaws of time. They travel, you know. They falter to a very tender darkness that makes them, I have no idea why, transparent. Yes, that's it. Light enters them in spite of themselves. Now, it's your turn. Tell me about today's world and drop another ice cube in my port, if you would. <laughs> uh, sometimes I'm concrete a little bit. <laughs> um, so I, I would like to read um, some letters. Uh, yes, a text uh, which, I read, uh, which I wrote with the constraint of working on each letter of the alphabet. But, uh, and I had a lot of pleasure doing it and not um, cheating necessarily on myself. Um, it's interesting when you work with constraint because it is like uh, swimming in the sea. As when you write with your own vocabulary, sometimes you get to swim only in a swimming pool. So, <laughs> <laughs> so these are, um, I'll read a few letters in French, and I think two of them are translated, and I, I will read you later on th those two letters in translation, but I'll read a few of them in French. Bousculade de saveur dans la bouche, brin de brise, buée de bourgueil et de barolo, bruit léger de buvard et de brave bête, à la bibliothèque, c'est bien moi, blotti dans les bras baroques d'Alice et le brouillard. D'autres désastres dès à présent, je devine le début d'un déclin de débordement. Disparaître, droit comme un dard dans un dé à présent. Délire du haut d'Ada, déchets de décibels, temps de déluge, drame 2, je viens dormir debout 
derviche dans le déchirement. Ego, épice d'épiderme, ego de e muet et d'exil, entends-tu émerger l'été, l'enfance, l'électricité et son écume d'extase Après Gutenberg et le gothique, on a goulûment guillemetté quand un glacier glisse dans la galaxie et gentiment guetté, grotesque et grotesque. Gorge, griffe, grammaire, après Gutenberg, on a fait des gueules, la guerre et des gores. Some letters uh, go very well with The French and other letters don't go at all with French. For example, W. It's impossible to write anything in French with W, or very few words. Wild, William, Tennessee, William Carlos Williams, Wolf, Wittgenstein, Walt Whitman, Warhol, Webb, et Wagon de Nom avec Whisky d'Irlande et Whisky d'Ecosse. Feuille de Whitlock fait boire William pour un week-end de Who's Who à Woundney ou à Windsor. <laughs> the, the Y, uh, yeah, like um, yesterday, un jour Yankee à Yellowknife en pensant à Yourcenar, nous avons entendu des you-you de femmes. Au Yukon, nous avons rêvé de Yassa et d'un yacht, yin et yang, yes. <laughs> and um, so now to in translation, but I'll read them first um, in French. Lèvre lila longtemps, liqueur de lumière et de littérature, ou petit lézard de lido levé dans mon lexique lion de questions. Au bord des lèvres lesbiennes longtemps libres de larmes, sous l'azur lapis lazuli, je me languis d'un goût de lobe doux et de loukoum. Longtemps je fis cette lecture de lagunes et de langues lointaines lyriques. We'll see how the English is bound. Long time lilac lips. Liquor of light and literature, or little lizard of the Lido louvered in my lion lexicon of questions. Long time on lesbian lips, let loose from tears under lapis lazuli light. I long to lick sweet lobe and lucum. Long time I leaned into this reading of lyric lagoon and language long ago. And uh, I will also read le, le P. Pour toutes les passions au présent, parfois une promenade. Nous plongions dans le paysage avec des phrases, des pensées au pouvoir de parfums et de paradoxes. Parfois la poussière. On la disait de Pékin, de Palmyre ou de Pompéi. Nous la partagions à plein poumon. On parlait de physiquement posséder la poésie. For all the passions in the present, possible a promenade, we plunge into panoramas with phrases, ponderings to the power of perfume and paradox, possibly particles of dust. Say, It's from Pekin, or Palmyra, or Pompeii. We partook in its plenitude. We proposed to physically possess poetry. And um, a last letter and uh, a last poem, because yeah, it has to end. C'est le J, c'est le J, qui est très court. Jadis, les jeudis de juillet, je jonglais dans mon journal avec Jardin Jacaranda, un jeu jujube jubilant entre mes joues, un jeu jailli jaguar de toujours joie de juillet. Merci. Thank you very much.